So guys, um, A, the weather was, was getting a little creepy. I thought, oh no, it might get crazy. I know you guys aren't the biggest fans of Texas weather swings. <laughs> well, uh, we have had problems with Texas yeah, weather, but yeah. I think it's going to be fine today and we're all hardened up, ready to, <laughs> come on, Texas, give us what you got. <laughs> well, don't say it too soon. <laughs> no, no, no. I think uh, it's supposed to come at 8 o'clock, so we'll, right. we'll be safe by then. Yeah. So um, tell me about how to... That's uh, an in-joke for your viewers, by the way. They'll get it. They'll get it. They're smart. Sure. They've seen the round table they know um, I'm, I'm curious uh, traveling overseas and, and experiencing music outside of, of American music can you talk to us a bit about that and finding these sounds these these different ways of listening to music and, and how it's affected you and, and how it's affected you John well when you travel in the world and you see these unbelievable players on their own instruments in their own environment doing their own exotic thing you have two thoughts one thought is that I'll never be able to do that man that guy started at the age of two America you can call yourself a musician with two chords on a guitar second thought is I like that drum I could do something with it yeah what about you John? well you know it's just, it's just what he said but um, it's you know you get sparked by certain things that you don't get at home and and you try and figure out now how are they doing that and then the next thing is well I gotta get that instrument so that I can figure out and work on it a little bit and then after a while I mean typically what we tried to do with D-Drum was we tried to learn what's the proper way to play this instrument you know and give it a good run do it give it your best shot but then don't feel ashamed or sorry for going off and then bastardizing it some and making it your own you know that's okay too it's just nice to give a little bit of respect to the the beginning part of it before you jump off into well I'm just gonna do it my way so. I'm curious what what was the first experience that made you dare to drum I mean what was it that first thing that you fell in love with music or, or, or to the drum you know it's kind of uh, I, I hate to say this but the dare to drums really kind of not true because you know we all going to drum we don't care we what done it, it anyway, anyway, right right and there was no right. dare involved no, 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 <laughs> but the, a lot of noise and a lot of chrome the the un, the un uh, uh, spoken part of the title is dare to drum with an orchestra playing gamelan music <laughs> that, that that's the yeah, full the drumming title. was the easy yeah, part yeah yeah that's the full title so I'm, I'm curious Stuart you've you've always been inventive and, and and tackled new projects that maybe other people wouldn't think to tackle what what is it about jumping around that you enjoy I mean is it is it fun to try different things well rock and rock and roll is a lot of fun to play I mean it's hard to beat uh, but it's quite limited in its scope and uh, once you've done that for 20 years and then you get um, there's another 10 years of life and then another 10 years of life after that and if you're a sentient being your mind and your tastes begin to keep on developing and so you start looking around for other things to do just playing E A and D chords for the last 50 years and the next 50 years I think would be uh, more of a challenge than looking for new stuff. You know, when I watched this film, I, I felt like it was educational to me. I didn't know all about the drum as much as, as you guys got into, and, and the fact that there was a story with it. But as a professor, that impact of having a way to teach kids something they may never have learned, how is that a fun part of this film? Well, you know, I, I, I really um, enjoy when it does happen that students, whether they're kids or adults, get something out of it and, and you see that reward, that's great. Having said that, I was trying to be careful about this film so that it didn't come off educational because there is a story there's a grit to it there is all this stuff going on but you can't help but learn something along the way so we never stopped to teach it was always move through it tell the story show the instruments play the music and along the way if you learn something that's great but it was never the goal to be an educational vehicle you know so to speak yeah Stuart do you mind if I ask what's coming up for you what's in your mind right now in my mind, I got a little too much. I got commissions from the Royal Conservatory in Toronto, from the Pittsburgh Symphony, from the Chicago Theatre Opera, the Long Beach Opera, and oh yes, there's a little piece I got to rewrite for uh, Iceland Symphony. So I'm, I'm, and that's by day. Then at night, I swivel my chair, and I've got all this rock and roll. That's where I got my Marshall amp and my drum set and my rock and roll toys. So by day, I'm, I have to think about charts and uh, real, you know, serious grown-up music. But by night, I rock. I think that's the best way to end the red carpet. Thank you guys so much for coming.